Hello, and welcome to our special edition of Children's Day Show. We will be celebrating some outstanding Nigerian children on the show today. I am Yasmin Basharu. And I am Omidi Jimoyoloa. Well, I'm celebrating my children's day with my family. Hmm. And I forgot to give my salamit. <laughs> of course not, but then this salad we're going to be eating chicken. Oh, that's right. We will start with the importance of Children's Day and why it is celebrated. We have joining us via Zoom, Zoha Buari, to talk to us about this. Hello, Zara. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So why is Children's Day important? Uh, I would say the central importance of Children's Day is that it really brings the attention of ch issues that children face everywhere in the world. Like, it's the one day where everybody finally focuses on how to better improve, like, child welfare and other things like that more than more so than other days what can be done to improve the rights of children well the essential rights that children have are rights to good health care education shelter good food recreational activities etc um, i feel that some things that could be done to improve the rights and welfare of children is to establish more recreational facilities so for where children can unwind and just like generally enjoy themselves. Yeah. Um, whether it be making some new clubs or something or scheduling a time specifically for children to play. Yeah. Another way is by improving the quality of education in public schools from teacher training, to facilities like labs and, and other facilities that are needed in schools. Mm. Well, Zara, if I may ask, if you are blessed and have the ability to have the less free privilege, what will you do? Uh, pr less privileged. I mean, <laughs> I would probably start with like hunger because obviously nutrition is important and everything. Then depending on where they are, I would sort them into like class okay. where they can get like an a, like a standard education because education is really an important tool to, to get by, especially in this day and age. It's good to know your rights. It's good to know what's going on around you. Like just like the bare minimum of education is very important in making conscious and correct decisions. Mm. Thank, Thank you, Zara. Zara. Thank you for joining You're us. <laughs> Goodbye. We will take a You're short welcome. break, and when we return, we will speak to the two young stars in the world of tech. This is Plus TV Africa Children Day Special. The world of tech has a lot of children winning in the tech space. Today, we are being joined by two tech geniuses, Joshua Agbola and Onome Emure. So, Onome, how did you get into the tech space? I got into the tech space when I was as young as seven. My mother introduced me to coding with something as simple as Scratch. And I did, began to build up my knowledge from there. I went on going from courses to courses and searched online until I became a master at eight programming languages. Wow. What challenges have you faced? Challenges have, I have faced are uh, the programs that I learn whenever there's whenever there's a teacher teaching the programs, they don't always teach everything and so it can get confusing for some people. Oh. Okay. What advice do you have for children wanting to go into tech? The advice I have is that it takes hard work and it takes smart work. You need to be hard working, you must devote your time to it. Yeah. And sure. You have to have a passion for it. Yeah. You're not just do it for doing sake. That's my advice. Thank you. What do you love most about tech? The thing I love most about tech is that it promotes problem solving and hard work. So Joshua, how did so how did you get into the tech space? So my dad introduced me to the tech space when I was when I was really young, when I was six years old. He took me to a computer training school called Genius Academy. 
When I thought I was too young, by the time I was done, he was surprised at what I could do. When I went to CCO at the age of seven, and they did, we did some coding classes, my dad found out I was a little bit ahead of my class. So he, so he, he took me to homeschooling, to my wife by himself. So I was able to focus with a lot of websites, I put it for my school and for myself, and I came up with a lot of projects. Joshua, what challenges have you faced? I, I've had a lot of challenges. First, my first lady, people are like doubting, like, what can this 10 year old do? They have to keep updating projects and keep making more projects to convince them that it's not. So it's not a lie. And also, I want to be working on a game called a, a game as a a game that um, I was trying to play on Google Play Store. For me to create that game, it took me a, about two weeks to create the game and to get it working on the phone. And now my next step was now to play to Google Play Store, and I did a lot of a lot of issues. And now and I'll be, I'm trying to solve it. I was frustrated sometimes. I I'll go and tell my sister like, my sister like, why why am I doing this? I want to give up. And that it was just like it should be soft of frustration because I've been doing this thing for I've I've been on this game for more than one month and it's like why why would you spend one month on this thing? But when you put some when you take something that you put focus into it, going to it's always going to be very it's going to go very far. And I've I've nearly solved the problem. So what advice do you have for children wanting to go into tech? Um I I, I apart from the children, I also want to give to the parents. I pray to help their children to to help their children take foundations to help their children to expose their creativity the way that it benefits humanity. If if we expose children to coding at this age, we're able to make Nigeria a better place. We have tech experts who will solve a lot of Nigerians. But Nigeria is a very opportune country okay. because there are a lot of problems, and those problems are left for us, our generations, to solve using tech examples. And for children, who to put. Put focus. We, we, we work towards what you are doing. Make sure you put focus on everything you are doing. Even if it looks like it's stress, still put your still put your work. Take your time. Focus on what you do, and you're going to get greater. If you focus on tech, you're going to get whatever you focus on, and you take time to do, you're going to be great in it. Okay. So Joshua, how do you juggle your tech with your schoolwork? Yeah, um, I I usually go to I I usually go to school. I still have my say, I still do my programming work. I still do my programming work. Yeah. I'll go to I'll, I'll go to my school and I will work more on my programming. So, so from that, I, by the time I'm back of school, I'm back from school. I will write some of my notes. I make sure I'm up, I'm up to date with the class, and I'll still go to work on my programming. Spend my holidays, some days in the week to work on my program. What do you love most about tech? Uh, I love the, what I love most about tech is the way you can expose your creativity, and you can expose your creativity by creating solutions, and you, you could design things the way you like. I like I like one because when I say like I can make something appear on the screen to a laptop, it's, it's so awesome because you can feel like you are using what you. No, a simple line of code, and you are expressing your creativity. You can put hello there, it's me, it's, that, it's, it's Joshua's world. You can express your creativity with Photoshop is there, Adobe, a lot of Adobe um, uh, and open source platforms for you. And you can, in any program, like the way you go into a program, I'm like, not able to express your creativity with that programming language. Joshua, what do you want to achieve in tech? And what are your goals? Okay, my goals are mainly like when that I I want, I want to make Nigeria a better place by solving a lot of solutions, I'm solving a lot of problems and providing a lot of solutions to problems, like find a solution to uh, to poverty, find a solution to to helping this pandemic, and find a solution in other things. I also created um uh, a a web app called. Bridge Doctor, B R I D G E O K T O R, Bridge Doctor dot com. When you you, you you put in your disease, then gives it gives you some some own remedies to solve that disease. And I and I and I believe that and I believe in Nigeria. I want to solve problems for Nigeria. I don't like 
where people are in poverty, people are falling, people are, people are because this this idea I got was because my my auntie she got because of cancer she was um, she was too, she was lost but but now that has inspired me to create this kind of a beginning that can help people find remedies to to um, ailments. Oh. Okay. Thank you so much, Joshua. This was a very insightful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Onome and Joshua. Like Onome said, it takes a whole lot of hard work and commitment, and I guess that's why I haven't lived up to my father's expectations in me becoming a coding genius. Well, as for me, I started coding when I was in JS1, but I stopped when I was in J3 because I couldn't finish because it was quite difficult it really and is. tasking. So we will take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about children who discovered their musical talent very early. Stay with us. It is still the Children's Day special and we highlight some, Ni some Nigerians across the country and world with great talent. Next up is Fim Fimfolua Amure, joining us from the United States and from Lagos, Timilayo Abodure, a saxophonist. Okay, so when did you start playing the saxophone? I started playing the saxophone when I was six years old. Okay. okay. And now I'm ten. That's over four years now. What exactly do you enjoy about the saxophone? Like, what even drove you to start playing it in the first place? The sound and what well, what made me start playing the saxophone was at first when I saw it, I like the sound. Because it was loud and it was shiny, so I took my best <laughs> to get it. Yeah. And so when I started, I started, and the song was catching up fast. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Um, what inspired you, or who inspired you into saxophone? Well, the people who inspired me to play the saxophone are people like Candy, Candy Dolpha, Olu Jazz, Dave Calls. Sax gold. What advice do you have for children that like play the saxophone? Children that, um, for anything they want to do, they should tell their parents. And for parents, they should find maybe teachers and the things, the equipment they need to be able to achieve that, so that they can be better in life. Where exactly do you do you see yourself with um, the saxophone? What are your goals with this? Well, I want to be um, I want to be a professional saxophonist when I grow up. Mm. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. You are definitely on the right path. Thank you so much, Tim Layo. Thank you so much. Fiin Folu Amure, thank you for joining us. So when did you start drumming? I started drumming at a very early age, but I didn't start dr I didn't start playing a full drum set until the age of three. I see you drum in the church. When did that start? There was a competition held in our church called GCGT, Sound for God's Children Got Talent, and I participated in it, and I won for my age group. I was five, and 
since then i've gotten the opportunity to play with the junior church for many different presentations in the main church and it's been ongoing since then what advice do you want to give those who are wanting to draw first off if you have the passion for it do go ahead and practice every day as much as you can and um, get like a teacher or take lessons and i would definitely advise to do so and build on from there thank you so much Fi. so it has been a really interesting show thank you for being a part of it don't you think so eh? Yes, that really be an interesting show and I like it. Yes, we got to see different people with different talents and different schools all over the world. I really enjoyed the tech because, like I said, my dad really wanted me to get into coding and I know this will be part of the things to convince him to continue nagging me to do so. Anyway. I like that entire girl because I was like, I was at age when I started playing sax, but I couldn't continue because I had a lot of challenges. Yes, I consider myself more of a singer than an instrumentalist anyways. It's been a really wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Moe. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you.